Hello, I'm Dr. Crystal Mercia for Contemporary Pediatrics. Speaking with me today is Dr. Emily Flaherty, head of the Division of Child Abuse Pediatrics at Ann and Robert H. Laurie Children's Hospital of Chicago and professor of pediatrics at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Dr. Flaherty is also lead author of the recently released AAP clinical report on evaluating children with fractures for child physical abuse. Dr. Flaherty, how frequently is child abuse a factor in childhood fractures? Uh, well, child abuse or uh, fractures are the second most common cause of, of, of injuries caused by child abuse. Um, the incidence really depends on the age of the child, so I would say somewhere between 12 and 20 percent of uh, fractures in young children are caused by child abuse. That actually leads into my next question. You, you mentioned that younger children is more frequent. It, are there certain types of children that you should be more aware of that are at higher risk? Well, there's uh, a number of things that place a child at, uh, make a child more vulnerable to be abused. Uh, uh, children uh, where there's domestic violence or interpersonal violence occurring in the home, uh, children where there are, where uh, their caregivers are using um, drugs or uh, alcohol to excess. Uh, uh, many things place children more at risk for child abuse. But on the other hand, children uh, where those uh, child abuse can occur even if those uh, risk factors aren't apparent. So when you are um, treating a child with a newly sustained fracture, what signs suggest that it may be the result of child abuse? Um, I, first of all, I think it's important that any time, especially when you're evaluating a young child with a fracture, to consider that possibility that this fracture could have been caused by child abuse, because I think only if you consider the possibility will you then uh, make a diagnosis if it in fact was caused by child abuse. But uh, the child's age, uh, the type of fracture, so some fractures have uh, very high specificity for child abuse, uh, understanding uh, the, how, the, how the injury occurred, uh, and then uh, does the mechanism that was described, does that explain the particular type of fracture that you're looking at? Uh, so those are some of the things that it's very important to um, evaluate. So careful history, careful physical evaluation, uh, looking for other injuries that could also have been caused by child abuse. So if a clinician suspects that this might be a fracture that's related to abuse, what are some of the next steps they can take? What sort of evaluations or histories would they be looking at? So as I already mentioned, a very complete history about the event that caused the injury, uh, then um, uh, looking for, also at the same time, considering the possibility that the child could have other conditions that would predispose them to fracture and that there might be other reasons why they might have these fractures other than child abuse. So considering that possibility, so then taking a very careful family history, uh, looking for a history of previous uh, injuries that might suggest that this child uh, could have been abused uh, previously, um, uh, looking for the risk factors, and we already mentioned the risk factors, to see if there are any risk factors in the family that make, might make this child more vulnerable careful physical examination, uh, looking for other uh, injuries that might suggest that this child was abused or that this child had other conditions that would make this child more vulnerable. So uh, a skin exam is particularly important. If the child is uh, less than two and, and you're suspicious that the fracture might have been caused by child abuse, then the child should have a complete skeletal survey. Uh, and if the child is very young, consider even doing a head CT. So if the child is less than one or less than six months, uh, you might consider a head CT as part of your complete evaluation if you suspect um, child abuse is a cause of this injury. If you were to summarize what uh, you have released and what's being discussed in the new report from AAP, what would you say is the most important thing for the clinicians to take home from this? 
Uh, I think the most important thing is to, if you see a fracture, particularly a fracture, if you see a fracture in a child, and particularly in a young child, just to consider the possibility that uh, this fracture could have been caused by child abuse, and then collect enough information so that you can determine uh, one way or another that it was or was not. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Flaherty. Uh, additional information on this topic is available in the AAP Clinical Report on Evaluating Children with Fractures for Child Physical Abuse. This has been Dr. Crystal Marcia for Contemporary Pediatrics.